joining us to discuss this issue and also get into some of the unrest that we've seen on the street as well. American Conservative Union Chairman Matt Schlapp, you know his, I'm not, not I'm not, don't mean to, to say this to introduce him as Mr. Mercedes Schlapp, but his wife obviously is the senior advisor to the Trump campaign and uh, you see her on TV as well as him. Matt, good to have you. Good to talk with you again. This, hey, Dana. It, it has been I have, and I can't believe I'm saying this about a convention because normally when you watch a political event like that, you don't get this feeling. But I have heard from so many people that say that they feel more uplifted after watching the convention and hearing the stories of all of these people who took advantage of the opportunity afforded to them by the freedom in America and 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 became and just accomplished their American dream. This is this has been such a different convention. Give me your initial thoughts on the first couple of nights. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, my expectations for the Republican convention were pretty low, not because <laughs> I didn't think they were able to do something good, but more because, you know, in this crazy era of a, of a government shutdown, economic shutdown, uh, you know, too many people living in their homes, uh, afraid to go to the studios and everything else, the, uh, and people with legitimate health concerns, mm-hmm. too. The, um, I, didn't, I didn't know if we could really pull this off, and I thought the DNC was strangely – kind of uh, Weird. clunky and Weird. low production. And even the set that the supposedly famous actresses strutted across, and I think I only knew two of the three, um, seemed like it was almost like, like a high school classroom, tiny. The lighting um, was so they, weird. They decided the lighting was weird. I just thought it was weird. I, I kept. I remember tweeting out at one point, like, is everyone high? Like, <laughs> are we all looking through a strange altering glass here? So it, it was a weird... It was dark. Um, you know, I love the idea we live in a tolerant country, but it was like a lot of kind of strange, weird people speaking up. It was like there wasn't any people, I don't know, that looked like the kind of folks I grew up with in Kansas. And the um, and so much grievance. It was like everyone's got something wrong with them or something that they can't overcome because this is such a terrible country. And, and I just was kind of exhausted from it. But I watched it, and I watched it with my kids and my wife, who I'm so proud of. And then we watched the first day of the Republican convention. I, I felt like I could breathe. It was it was so nice to see it. They well, did a great job. And you, and you get tired from constantly hearing the country that you live in run down. And 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 by the end of the DNC, I was wondering why any of these individuals were choosing to live in the United States to begin with, if they thought it was just absolutely so heinous. And one of the I love well, you know the why? yes. You know why? They, it's only because they're getting stuff that they want. Mm. But I, I think if they had the choice, if they could get all that stuff that they wanted, like you know, uh, a place where you can live your unique American life legally, uh, no matter what adult decisions you make. Um, mm-hmm. You got clean air, no matter what they say. You got clean water, no matter what they say. Um, we got a heck of a generous social welfare state uh, if you're not so much of a hard worker. Um, you know, uh, other than that, the, the Bennies, what I heard out of that was I'd like to live anywhere else but here. I'd rather live in Cuba or Venezuela yeah. or anywhere. They, they want to transform America, the Obama euphemism, which I now know what it means. It means mm. scrap America because it's a pile of junk and let's start over. And uh, I'm going to fight that, Dana, as I know you will, too. Yeah, the, and, and uh, absolutely. We, we had spoke with Ronna McDaniel yesterday and I asked her about uh, Nancy Pelosi's remarks where she called Republicans enemies of the state. And I liked Ronna's answer and, and talking with Matt Schlapp, who is the uh, chairman of the ACU. Uh, Ronna said that, well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're enemies of the state that Nancy Pelosi wants, the socialist state. People who support freedom are absolutely enemies of socialism. And I think you really saw, I, I, I watched, I mean, in comparing the conventions, I watched uh, the left try to make socialism and tyranny attractive. But, I mean, when you heard people like Maximo Alvarez speak, I don't know who walked away from that gentleman's speech with a dry eye or when we saw daniel cameron last night who i think is going to be a rock star in the republican party i don't know why kentucky's been keeping them all to them, themselves that, that's unfair spread the spread the cameron yeah. i you know i i i i just i felt so much hope and encouragement and there was the overwhelming theme of grace and redemption which is necessary for the reconciliation to all of this unrest matt that we see in the country what do you expect tonight that's right yeah, no, that's exactly right. And tonight, I, I, you know, the highlight, of course, is hearing from Mike Pence. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, to me, what I love about Mike Pence is he's a rock-solid conservative. You never have to question where he's going to be. 
Uh, but he does it in kind of that Midwestern, tender, yes. steady, compassionate way. And I, and I think we're going to see um, a speech that, of course, supports the president and his policies. But I think it gives Mike Pence a chance to reintroduce himself mm. uh, to, to American voters. Just like I think this convention, one of the most important goals of this convention is to remind people that Donald Trump is not this bogeyman that the media makes him out to be. He's a human being. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a patriot. And he, he, you know, there's there's so many beautiful things about his character, and the, and and what he does uh, in the quiet of the day, that uh, that I think people need to kind of reconsider, especially for that section of the electorate. And Dana, there is a section of the electorate that hasn't decided who they're going to vote for. Most of them actually like the president's policies. Mm -hmm. They're more favorably disposed to the president than they are to Joe Biden. But because the coverage is you know, 90 percent just got awful. If you listen to what Harvard says with its analytics and other institutions, because it's so got awful, they feel kind of spooked, like they maybe shouldn't vote for this guy because he's a racist or mm. he hates women or he hates Muslims or he's just he's just self-dealing, like all the charges through impeachment and a special counsel and all the crap he's had to go through. He's got a chance and the vice president does as well to remind people that they're simply American patriots who have a political perspective and they want to share that with the voter. Yeah, absolutely. I re and you bring up a good point. I remember election night looking at the exit poll data and seeing the I was really surprised at the number at the percentage of individuals who said that they had made their choice as to whom to vote for in, in the week uh, before the election. And I we got to remember that. And of course, the media is definitely not on that side. Uh, I I. What two things yeah, before I true. yeah two things before I let you go uh, I thought the first lady's speech was quite good and I have to say I feel sometimes I really feel for Melania Trump because I think that she gets kicked around quite a bit and I think that some of the stuff that's said to her it I wince when I see it because I I maybe it doesn't bother her but it bothers me to see people kick like that when all they I mean she's done a lot to advocate for children and I think she's been a great first lady and that she does her part incredibly well she knows that people elected her husband not her and but that they're a team and I I I I thought that her speech last night was was quite good, and it was good to hear her story on immigration because not a lot of people get to hear that from her. Yeah, I agree completely. I think she executed wonderfully. Um, you know, she's got a thick accent, and you had, like you said, Bette Midler. She speaks six languages, and that's like her fourth she's one that she's flu they, most fluent in. <laughs> I thought they were the ones always lecturing us that right? they're pro-immigration and right? hate immigrants and when you see how they actually treat immigrants and how Black Lives Matter Incorporated treats people actually have to live in these cities and in these communities, you realize the great hypocrisy of, of Joe Biden, of the Democratic Party, of these institutions, of, the, the, of their leading lights, if you could call them that, or their dim bulbs is maybe a better way to say it. But they use people for political power, and they clearly – don't care about them as individuals because when their lives never get better, they don't seem to care. Yeah. And for Melania Trump, they don't want to hold her up as an immigrant that's had like or such a uniquely, I mean, maybe the quintessentially unique American experience coming in, uh, you know, with no kind of like uh, station in, in American society. Right. And she's our first lady and they should be holding her up, but instead they try to hold her down. Yeah, and, you I know, agree. when they say they go, they really go high when we go low. That's, yeah. That's the, ultimate, that's the ultimate time when I said, oh, my gosh, you guys are such liars. You don't even know how much you're lying. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was I expected it. But to see the 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 fervor with which they went at the first lady last night. Last question for you. The president, obviously, he's going to be the big speaker Thursday as everything concludes. Yep. What does Trump need to do to not just uh, assure the base, but to appeal to those people who really like his policies? But it's that branding, that Democrat branding that they see on That's the media. Right. What do you what did they need from POTUS? Here's the thing. He's a marketer, which means two things. He can brag and he can sell. And this election's got to be about tomorrow and not yesterday. So he can't spend yeah. too much time talking about all the great things of yesterday. And it's a freaking great list. Yeah, but it's what have you done for me lately that they care about. That's right. And what are you going to do for me tomorrow? So he's got to right. talk about tomorrow. Uh, and the other thing is 
he's got to remind them that he put it all on the line, including all of his money, his prestige, his family's reputation. He put it all on the line because he thought Barack Obama had really brought this country low. And I agree with him on that. And he wanted to put some common sense policies in place to you know, literally make America great again. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. And policies aren't simple, but the, the slogan's simple, and it connects to people. And if he can talk to what he can talk about what he wants to get done for people tomorrow, and if he can remind them that with despite his outsized personality and the parts of his character that people you know uh, would want less of, and this group of mm-hmm. the electorate that they don't know if they're really into Trump, even though they like his policies, he's got to close the deal. Now he's pretty good at closing the deal. And he'll be able so to do that why, Thursday. Uh, Yes, I, it's, you know, he's in the red zone, Dana. He's got to close the deal. I think he can do it. And, th- and this is honestly, I always said that this would be Republicans to lose. And I don't think uh, and Trump does. He, this is this is where I think he really comes in and shines. Matt Schlapp, we'll have to talk again soon. ACU chairman, Matt, all the best. Say hello to your, your lovely wife for me. And uh, we'll be watching tonight.